I'm Emily Blunt, and this is my husband, John Krasinski. But it's cool if you only know us by our celebrity couple name, Crunt. No. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 times Emily Blunt and John Krasinski made us believe in love. We are so excited. We're so, so excited. We never get out. No, we so. never get out. <laughs> get out. Ever. It's too desperate. It's too, That's yeah, too desperate. Pull it back. For this list, we'll be looking at the cutest, most wholesome, and funniest times the crunts were hashtag couple goals. What Emily Blunt and John Krasinski moment makes you believe in love? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. The Surprise Hamilton Performance When the world shut down in 2020, John Krasinski turned to YouTube to spread some much-needed joy. In the second episode of his Some Good News web series, he spoke to a young girl named Aubrey, whose birthday trip to Hamilton got cancelled. I heard you're a big uh, Hamilton fan. Mm-hmm. Scale of one to ten, what do we think? Are we a are we a seven or eight or million? A million! Wow, that's amazing! And you didn't get to see it. Instead, she stayed home and watched Mary Poppins Returns. And would you believe it? Krasinski just happens to know its stars. You have a favorite bit? I like the Tower of London part where. Whereas the Learys climbed the Tower of London. Aubrey's adorably excited to meet Mary Poppins, i.e. Emily Blunt, but her next surprise blew us all away. The cast of Hamilton reunited to perform, especially for her. Will they know what you overcame? Will they know you COVID-19 pandemic is arguably one of the darkest periods of the 21st century so far. However, this power couple continued to spread light, and we love them for that. Number 19, Anna Kendrick's Steal My Girl on Lip Sync Battle We know that John Krasinski and Emily Blunt are hashtag relationship goals, but it turns out Anna Kendrick also knows it. During a round on Lip Sync Battle, the Pitch Perfect star sang One Direction's Steal My Girl. The girl in question was none other than Emily Blunt. She came prepared with photos she serenaded before revealing a couple's t-shirt under her jacket. The bit keeps going after the song has finished as well. John's reaction to this information is priceless. You know you've got someone special when Anna Kendrick wants to take her heart away. Number 18, meeting Barack Obama. Did you know that being famous doesn't make you immune to getting starstruck? Just ask the crunts. While attending the Kennedy Center Honors, this couple got the chance to meet a particularly special person, the 44th President of the United States. Someone popped out of like a secret door and you were like, do you want to meet them? And I was like, <laughs> yes. Didn't know who I was going to meet, maybe to my death. And it went as adorably well as you might hope. Turns out that meeting this power couple brought out a side of Blunt, a born and raised Brit, and Krasinski that they never even knew they had. He said, oh, hey, how you doing? Oh, my gosh, I really love what you do. God, I love all your movies. And she went, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I so appreciate that. We would have loved to witness this interaction, as it sounds hilariously precious. Hey, a couple who gushes over Commander-in-Chief together stays together. I was like, you're acting very dumb. And he goes, can't forget about this guy. I love the office. And I went, <laughs> <laughs> We wonder how President Obama felt meeting them. Number 17, regular play attendance. If your significant other was in a play, how many times would you go and see it? Once, twice, every night? I will have seen it by the end four times, which I feel is very wifely. It's, it's pretty solid. It's like a solid number. While speaking to Jimmy Kimmel on the show, Emily Blunt lovingly gushed over her husband's performance in Dry Powder, making us wish we'd nab tickets for this play's limited run. She also recalled how she became somewhat distracted during her visit on opening night by a minor wardrobe malfunction. His suit jacket was tucked into his pants into the back, like really tucked. 
like right in there. Like wedged. Yeah, wedged. Yeah. And I, I heard myself say, oh my God, no. It's so sweet how all she could focus on was helping her husband. As is her gratitude towards his co-star, Hank Azaria, for helping out. God bless him. I could see he changed a certain move he did on stage, and he just came behind him and just wrenched it out the back of his <laughs> Oh, he did? Like a saint, you know? <laughs> and I was like, I'm in love with you. As she happily talks Krasinski up, you can almost forget she's actually there to promote her own projects. Number 16, Fishing for Answers. You know how they say the foundation of a good relationship is friendship? Well, this Q&A proves that Blunt and Krasinski are actually BFFs. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, the couple fishes questions out of a bowl. Fishing for answers. For answers. Answers. For kids are watching, it's answers. It's answers. We'd like to single out some highlights, like Krasinski's Mary Poppins impression, or Blunt hoping she was his first celeb crush. But we'd be here all day. Instead, we want to focus on how painfully cute they are together. What about 13-year-old John? 13-year-old John was definitely watching uh, Tommy Boy or Ace Ventura. Oh, yes. On loop. Emily would have been watching The Mask or Jurassic Park. Ooh. Whether it's lovingly poking fun out of each other or dissolving into giggles, their dynamic just makes our hearts melt. Who wouldn't want someone to look at them the way that these two look at each other? How are you similar to Jack Ryan? Oh, um, I don't know. I'm He's similar. a hero, guys. Done. Number 15, their red carpet love. Red carpets are typically populated by fabulously dressed celebs posing for photos and participating in interviews. However, Blunt and Krasinski's carpet game is downright dreamy. This is my favorite like collaborator like ever. So. Diva like behavior. Yes, exactly. If you're up for it again, then it could be great. You can often see them whispering to one another, giggling, and just enjoying each other's company. They leave us feeling like we're crashing their date night. I think it's the same as everybody else's date night. Yeah. <laughs> Other than the water slide of chocolate fudge, which we do every <laughs> night. When they stop for interviews, they're so charming, laid back and friendly that we could listen to them chat for hours. The way they support and hype each other up is adorable. It's always a delight to hear them share stories about marital life, but when they're together, they radiate love and joy. What more could you possibly want? Well, I definitely wept a lot. You wept a lot. Great. I love that you said, you admit it, you're a man like that, you go. Number 14, tear-inducing performances. Anyone following John Krasinski will know he was a huge Emily Blunt fan long before they met. Still, hearing him rave over her career is just the most endearing and lovable thing ever. Know that she's, in my opinion, the best there is, and, and she has the unique capability to do anything that she wants so brilliantly. Blunt shared a story about how he cried when he first saw her in Into the Woods. Meanwhile, Krasinski also revealed that he teared up while watching Mary Poppins Returns. I was just in the back at the like concessions table and I just said, no, I'm looking for napkins. Doesn't that just make your heart want to burst? In both instances, Blunt explained that he welled up because he was so moved by the stories. However, we reckon that she's just being modest. We bet his pride for his incredibly talented wife had something to do with it. And he was so moved by the film when he saw it. I heard that. He just cried and cried. He, he kept did. saying, like, what's happening to me? Number 13, the Crunts want to double date. We love when celebs get behind a great cause. And offering a double date to the premiere of A Quiet Place is certainly a unique way to fundraise. Hey, guys. <clears throat> Guys, and energy, energy. Here we go. Do something with us. No, John, it's still. No friends. We have no doubt that their hilariously compelling invitation raised plenty of dough for the Malala Fund. Only the Crunts could film an awkward, desperate, and slightly ominous double date video and still hold our intrigue. Hi, I'm Emily Blunt, and this is my husband, John Krasinski. And we're looking for a couple that's in the dark rooms full of strangers. What? We're going to guess that it went well since they decided to reprise the offer for the film's sequel and raise cash for another worthy cause. 
Somehow, this video request is just as funny as the first one. Be prepared for John to recruit you to this couple's vacation group that may or may not be a cult. Oh, it's definitely a cult. But they do do a really good job of mixing up the locations, don't they? This year we're going to wine country. I hate it. Oregon, not Listen, California. The thing Where do we swipe right? Number 12, an emotional proposal. This couple's love is the gift that keeps on giving, so of course, many fans are curious about their 2009 engagement. And the snippets they've shared are enough to bring tears to our eyes. The 38-year-old actress was on Monday's episode of the River Cafe Table 4 podcast and revealed the dish she made for her husband, John Krasinski, that she believes caused him to propose. Well, it's funny, I guess I just made something that day. I knew he would love. Blunt told MTV that there were flutes, butterflies, and angels showering them with rainbow drops. Krasinski's account involved some different mythical creatures. And there were unicorns and oceans and clouds. And she said yes. Okay, so most of that is definitely fabricated, but there's no doubt that the moment was enchanting and heartfelt and involved a lot of crying. As Krasinski mentioned, the important part is that she said yes, and they've been living their happily ever after ever since. Fantastic. That reaction means I married up, and don't I know it? <laughs> I know. Don't I know it? Number 11, ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Another time this couple plunged into a charitable cause was the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Krasinski's up first, but attempts to scale the challenge down noticeably. Fortunately, I'm on location with my wife, so as this weird windmill is my witness, this is the biggest container I could find. While he sits there and beams with pride at his efforts, Blunt walks by and completely soaks him. It is iconic. You lied to me. I challenge my wife, Emily Blunt. He then nominates her to take up the challenge, but doesn't exactly let her choose where or when. I fucking challenge. What? What's the name? I challenge you to an ice bucket challenge. Yeah. Oh <laughs> Say your name. Yell a name. It's a fun and amusing way to create a splash over an important cause, and just another example of their generosity and lively spirits. Too bad about those groceries, though. Number 10, scuba diving on their honeymoon. I don't know if you have the same phobia of sharks. I have a big phobia of sharks. I feel like there are sharks in any mass of water. Imagine feeling so safe with your significant other that you let them talk you into facing your fears on your honeymoon, no less. The newlyweds went scuba diving in shark-filled waters despite Blunt's aversion to the sharp-toothed creatures. I thought we were just going to be snorkeling with tropical fish and and he went, watch this, and he starts chumming the water with, with food and blood, and, and he goes, jump in. Just as she was seemingly getting into it, a shark got close, causing her to faint. Right as the shark came close to her, she very adorably went, and then the shark came right here, and she went. <laughs> the way John recounts the event is darkly hilarious and provides some insight into their relationship. Anyway, for most of us, that experience would be enough to keep us shorebound for life. However, this brave trooper stayed the course. Thankfully, she was subsequently approached by a kind sea turtle who brightened her day. They're amazing, yeah. aren't they? That's and he like hugged her, and it's like he knew she had a bad day, and he was like, sorry oh. about... <laughs> Sorry about my buddy Terry, he gets real close on the flybys. <laughs> Number 9, Casting a Quiet Place When Krasinski co-wrote the script for this post-apocalyptic horror flick, he knew he wanted Blunt involved. He's the most unbelievably talented person, powerful person, uh, kindest person, she makes everyone around her better. However, he didn't want the fact that their husband and wife to overshadow or influence the experience. So, as Krasinski would share details about the movie, Blunt would recommend actresses who might be best suited for the role. But she was so taken by the script that she told Krasinski, who was on the verge of hiring a pal of hers, that she wanted to play Evelyn Abbott instead. I didn't send her the script, admittedly. She wasn't sort of hired, but... Um, so close. But so close. <laughs> and then I read the script and I was like, you need to call her and fire her. We hope that friendship recovered. But you've got to admit that this collaboration was a smash hit. Sounds really sappy, but it's true. I think it's the greatest collaboration I've ever had in my career. I, I've never seen her work. Number eight, going above and beyond to spend weekends with the family. 
What do you do if you're two married Hollywood stars whose work puts you on opposite sides of the Atlantic? Well, if you're John Krasinski, you make multiple trips. Uh, who are you visiting? I said, my <clears> wife. And he said, is she an actress? And I said, yeah. He said, uh, would I know her? I said, I, I don't know. And he said, what's her name? And I said, Emily Blunt. As he divulged, spending time with his nearest and dearest is non-negotiable. When his work on Jack Ryan had him in Montreal, he headed to England, where Blunt and his kids were while she shot Mary Poppins Returns on weekends. He went out and bought himself a tweed flat cap. Mm. No, he looked awesome. Was that good? No, no, he looked like something out of a Guy Ritchie film. You look great. And he walked down the street <laughs> and it was like the sun came out. Krasinski insists that he's so lucky to be in the biz that he can't complain. He just wishes he could have more time with his kids. At least his gruelling travel schedule gave us this hilarious anecdote about a dubious customs agent. Said Emily Blunt as he was writing something and he went, You? <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> went, yeah, and he goes, All right, get out of here. And he probably collected his fair share of air miles as well. Number seven, the battle of the accents. Krasinski's Boston accent occasionally slips out, while Blunt's undeniably British. No amount of years in the US will change that. Funnily enough, she wishes her husband would look less like an American tourist when visiting her home country. I did encourage him that he would be welcome more if he stopped wearing a baseball cap, because I just said, you look so American. <laughs> Nobody wears baseball caps. Oh, that makes it better. You look so American to take off the baseball cap. <laughs> I was just wanting you to blend in a That's bit. That's just so... called prejudice, is what so... it is. <laughs> and it seems that their oldest daughter, Hazel's accent, is another source of friendly friction for this adorable binational couple. While she sounded like a Brit for some time thanks to a prolonged stint in the UK, Blunt has revealed that it didn't exactly last. And she was sort of saying things like bath and water, and now she's back to water. <laughs> Hearing her imitate the different pronunciations is comedy gold. We can only imagine what a conversation sounds like in their house. I went, it's water. And she was like, no, it's water. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> Number six, a new cook. John Krasinski admits that it took him a few decades to learn his way around a kitchen, but he's since put those newfound skills to good use. In a sweet gesture, Krasinski surprised Blunt with a home-cooked meal as a Mother's Day treat. Pretty sad that that's what impresses her. That just goes to show you how unimpressive I am at home. <laughs> that I was like, I'm gonna cook you a meal, and she was like, oh my god! She was admittedly apprehensive about his bold decision to tackle the classic British roast dinner. But we guess he nailed it since she put his cooking skills on the table during a wager over Leonardo DiCaprio's age. I said, he's not oh. over 40, was my thing. Okay. And she said, if I'm right, uh, you have to cook me for me every Sunday. And if you're right, you get to play Call of Duty once a week. Of course, Blunt was right, although it sounds like Krasinski doesn't always uphold his end of the deal. I just, you know, <laughs> with the new Star Wars trailer out, I was like, I'm not gonna cook tonight. <laughs> I was like, why are you doing that to my face? Still, with great food and excellent company, a Sunday roast at the Blunt Krasinski residence sounds delightful. Number five, John Krasinski's obsession with The Devil Wears Prada. Think you're Emily Blunt's number one fan? Well, you should think again. <laughs> you weren't cool at all. There was none of that, actually, uh, I don't know your work. You were a proper fan of it. Oh, I was, I was full stalker status, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, hey, you want to go on a date with me? We all know that Krasinski was a longtime admirer of hers. So much so, in fact, that he's confessed to seeing her movie, The Devil Wears Prada, roughly 70 times. Krasinski is even into all the amazing fashion on display. We imagine he knows his cerulean blues from his royal blues. There's a sort of montage sequence where Annie Hathaway's got numerous fabulous outfits that they yeah. go through. And John, one day I came home and he was watching it. And, and he was watching the montage bit and he goes, and that's my favorite outfit. The actor even joked that he settled for his wife because Anne Hathaway wasn't available. We guess Krasinski just has a thing for receptionists or personal slash first assistants, if you want to be precise. 
Of course, Blunt finds his love for the work endearing, and we're right there with her. Everybody fell in love with your wife. Yeah, I don't know if people channel movie. surf anymore, but every time you're channel surfing, no matter what, if there it is Devil Wears Prada, we're in. Yeah. We're locked back in. <laughs> it's on she's, USA every yeah, day. She's, <laughs> she's a done. genius. Yeah, she she's really, a genius. Yeah, she is. she is. Number four, the Kimmel School of Perfect Acting Skits. A Quiet Place showed the world that Blunt and Krasinski belonged on screen together. But real fans have known that since they saw them in this hilarious skit where they attend Jimmy Kimmel's unusual acting workshop to better their craft. Things start off quite intimate and intense, with the coach instructing them to breathe their lines directly into each other's mouths. Breathe. Are you breathing? Are you breathing? You're not breathing. We wonder how many takes it took them to get through it without laughing. The tone swiftly darkens as Kimmel ends their marriage for the sake of the scene. So we're not married. You know, when he's, when he's right, he's right. And, um, and sacrifice is is art. We love how invested they are, especially when Grzynski throws his wedding ring to the ground. Blunt's devastation is utterly heartbreaking. But don't worry, the bloopers tell a whole other, completely hysterical story. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, meant to be. If you're a skeptic of love at first sight, the crunch story might just sway you. It was 2008, and Blunt was hanging out with a pal in some LA restaurant discussing the joys of singledom. Her friend then noticed another friend, Krasinski, in the establishment. He came over to say hi, shook Blunt's hand, and made her laugh. He just stood there and made me laugh. And was, yeah. <laughs> there you go, and it's worked out. He just did a bit. <laughs> you know the rest. Both confessed that the connection was instant and said they knew almost immediately that they'd found their forever person. I was, uh, I was, I tried to hide the sheepish nerd and come across more masculine. I don't know if it worked or not. Um, but uh, no, I, I, I shook her hand, and to be honest, I knew, uh, I knew right then and there that I felt uh, uh, everything I needed to feel for. Okay, so maybe rom-com writers won't be rushing to buy the rights to this meet cute, but it sounds pretty adorable to us. They tied the knot in 2010, getting their very own happily ever after. This is our romantic comedy. This is it. This is right it. it. Number two, their prank war with Jimmy Kimmel. Krasinski and Blunt make the perfect trickster team. When they were neighbors with Jimmy Kimmel, they initiated a Christmas prank that launched an ongoing holiday tradition. Yeah, we put the we put ornaments in your living room. Right, it's a and very, you retaliated. You retaliated. It was a harmless prank. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. the you know, just the lights is fun. It's a light show. And you were oh. you retaliated. Oh, we have a whole thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You put an insurance sign uh, <laughs> in my driveway. As you can imagine, the jokes grew increasingly outrageous, and we think Jim from the office would be proud. From Kimmel sending the Crunts a giant inflatable reindeer to them leaving a special kind of secret Santa present in and on his car, there's no shortage of hysterical stories. That was a mess. Yep. That was a real mess. And then I crashed your car. Yes. No. Remember when it... Remember when it started out innocent and then I crashed your car? Even when Kimmel brought his show to the East Coast, he fell prey to their antics. It looks like Jim Halpert from The Office found the perfect match. Because if you ask us, this prank war is the holiday gift that keeps on giving. I wish I was more prepared. I do know where you live, but I didn't do anything to it. Yeah, well. It's not even Christmas time. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, crashing an acceptance speech. Thank you, Owen Stoff and Chris McCory and the Butterworths, and finally to my sneaky husband, John Krasinski. <laughs> Is there anything more endearing than seeing someone fully reveling in their partner's accomplishments? We don't think so. At the 2015 Critics' Choice Awards, Krasinski was waiting backstage for his turn to present. The category before was Best Actress in an Action Movie. And guess who won? And the Critics' Choice is... Emily Blunt, Edge of Tomorrow. 
was so excited that he couldn't resist running out on stage to congratulate her. Yeah! <laughs> He's presenting next, so... Their brief interaction is so sweet, and our hearts fully melt watching them hug excitedly. It's her achievement and her moment, and we love seeing him be such a sweet, supportive husband. This is, simply put, the definition of couple goals. I'm terrified I'm going to wake up one morning and you're benching me. <laughs> which, which I did, just to kind of freak him out. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.